while you're still enjoying the benefits and blessings of last season, God is about to do some things for you so that you will have to make room for the new. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's get into his word this morning. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and in thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Paul was writing to his protege, Timothy. And Paul said, I know this, I know this faith in you. I know this faith in you because I knew your grandmama. Mm. And she was a woman of faith. I knew your mother. And she was a woman of faith. And I know that if your grandmother handed her faith down to your mother, then your mother handed that same faith down to you. I want to talk to you this morning about the hands that rock the cradle. <laughs> A tribute to the mothers. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. In the presence of our life-changing king, hallelujah. The saying is, the hands that rock the cradle rule the world. Amen. 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 Because it's the mother's input and impartation oftentimes that shapes and defines what the children believe. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I'm jumping way ahead in my message, but when I think, you know, you may be thinking, well, preacher, you, you're the pastor. I know that the children are formed and shaped by your preaching. I hope that it has some input and some importance. But when I think to the daily day routine, it's mama that encourages them to pray day to day. It's mama that sends them the daily scriptures that she encourages them to read. Mama's the one that tells them to don't forget to quote the and confess the 91st Psalm. Something about mothers, it shapes and defines what and how we believe. The hands that rock the cradle are the ones that rule the world. And it should be like it was with Timothy where his mother passed down a faith that she got from her mother so that the faith that was in him, even though he was going through, Paul said, I know it's in you because your mama and your grandmama imparted some faith to you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He went on to say, stir it up. Stir up that faith that I know that is in you. I almost call this stir up what your mama gave you. <laughs> stir up that faith that I know that is in you because your mama had it and your grandma had it hallelujah and I know you're going through something but it was what they imparted to you was not a spirit of fear but it was a spirit of power love a sound mind they imparted to you some faith that I know is in you why because the hand that rocks the cradle form and shape how you view your God and how you believe. That's what mothers do. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31. If you weren't here on Wednesday night, we came from here. We talked about the fact that Proverbs 31 is the 
king that is sharing his testimony of how his mother gave him a prophecy and told him who he would be. She told him he was a king. And it says this in Proverbs chapter 31 verse 1. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. What my son and what the son of my womb and what the son of my vows. She said this, give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. And I always thought of the fact that she was really mainly only talking to him about wayward, strange, ungodly women destroying him. But if you look at Bible history, when you see the kings that go away and go astray, it's because they married strange women that believe strange things. And not only did they take the men, their husbands, of course, they then trained and imparted that same theology to their children. Talking about the importance of marrying the right woman because she's going to influence your children. The hands that rock the cradle rule the world. You got to make sure that you marrying godly women because that godly woman will impart godly things to your children. Otherwise, your children will be fed and led by things that will cause them to go away and go astray from the things of God. Amen? Hallelujah. You see it all throughout the Bible. You see this Solomon who was a godly man married ungodly women ended up with 600 wives, 300 concubines, and the Bible says that he was led away and led astray. And this son marked the beginning of the division of the kingdom of Israel. Why? Because the hands that rock the cradle rule the world. The Bible tells us, be not unequally Yo, why? Because if you marry somebody that doesn't believe like you, your children will believe like she believes. The hands that lock, lock the cradle rule the world. It's important that we in, set our children up for success. Because the women are either going to lead them away or lead them to the God that can help them. They're either going to impart the word or they're going to impart the world. And I thank God for godly mothers, hallelujah, that speak to their children, hallelujah, and let them know that they are kings under the king of kings, hallelujah, and they can do all things through Christ to, who strengthens them, amen? amen? Amen. It's so important, hallelujah, for us to know as godly mothers the import and the importance of your impartation that you make to children, amen? Hallelujah. You're shaping kings and queens. You're forming, hallelujah, future and present Christians to carry the gospel forward. The hands that rock the cradle. But what I want to also point out is that not only as godly women do you influence and shape your children there's a residual effect and when you whether you be a 
mother, godmother, stepmother, grandmother, when you impart godly wisdom, godly knowledge, hallelujah, and godly love to your children, guess what? It's not only affecting them, it's affecting you too. I call it, I call it the Joshua effect. Let's go somewhere. Let's go to Exodus chapter 17. The Joshua effect. For those that don't know, Joshua was Moses' protege, Moses' disciple. The same way mothers disciple their children. Moses had a disciple. Amen. Hallelujah. And we know the importance of having a Jethro like Moses has Somebody who is a mentor A model and a motivator We even know the importance of having an Aaron And a her Somebody that can hold up our hands And support us Peers that speak into us But Sometimes I think we underestimate The importance of having Somebody that we minister to Mothers Your children are helping you Amen Amen. It's called the Joshua effect. I call it the Joshua effect. Amen. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 17 verse 14. It says this. And the Lord said unto Moses, write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. I'm saying to you mothers, the things that God has done for you, through you, with you, by you, rehearse it in the ears of your children. Because this is the first thing it'll do. Every time you rehearse it, you rehear it. It's helping you when you minister to your children. Because every time you rehearse it, you rehear it. How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing. hearing. Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. hearing. And every time, hallelujah, you rehearse your testimony. Every time you share the word, hallelujah, with the people that you decide to disciple. Every time you speak to your children, mother, about the godly things, hallelujah, of the B-I-B-L-E, hallelujah, is doing something in you. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The Joshua effect creates the ripple effect. Because you say it and faith comes out. You hear it and faith comes in. And the faith stirs up, hallelujah, the faith that's already in your heart, hallelujah, to the point that you say it again. It's a ripple effect that comes from mothers speaking to their children. You wonder why, hallelujah, mothers, grandmothers are praying, hallelujah, women. It's because the same time that they're ministering to you, it's ministering to them. Hallelujah. The same time they're imparting faith to you, it's important faith to them. That's why we can look at the women of the past and see, hallelujah, that they were steadfast, unmovable, concrete, hallelujah, in their faith. Because it not only came in, came out of their mouth, it came back into their heart. Every time they spoke the word, it's a ripple effect. It's a ripple effect. They heard the word. They spoke the word. They heard the word. They spoke the word. They heard the word. They spoke the word. And they believed the word. Mothers, every time you minister to your children, hallelujah, you speak the word. You hear the word. You speak the word. You hear the word. You speak the word. You hear the word. Hear the word and you believe it all that much more. It's not just helping them. It's helping you. 
Hallelujah. When you minister to your children. What's the Joshua effect? The Joshua effect also calls what I've heard is called the butterfly effect. You've heard the, the term butterfly effect? The butterfly effect is talking about the fact that one little thing will call, can change and bring about a big thing. It's saying that the butterfly flapping its wings could ultimately be influ influence the direction of a tornado. I'm saying to you that what you think is a little thing, it can ultimately cause, hallelujah, a big thing when you minister to your children. When you minister to somebody and you share the word, hallelujah, like mothers do, imparting the faith that has been imparted to you, hallelujah, it, can, it might seem like a little thing. But it can turn into a big thing for you. In John's Gospel, chapter 4, I'm not going to turn there, but you're familiar with the story. Jesus was ministering to a woman at a well. And the Bible says that when he got there, he was hungry. So his disciples went to go get him something to eat. He was hungry, and he was at a well, and he was thirsty. But after he ministered to the woman at the well, having never received any water and having never received any food, by the time the disciples got back, the Bible says he was charged up, energized. And the, the, the disciples were wondering, did he get some food from somewhere? Did somebody bring Jesus a sandwich or something that we don't know about? And Jesus said, no, I had some meat that you don't know nothing about. Hallelujah. I was ministering the truth of the gospel to somebody. Mothers, when you teach, hallelujah, your children the gospel, it will energize you. It will charge you, hallelujah, and give you the power, the strength to do what it is that God has called you to do. This happens when you minister to your children. It's not just a benefit to them, hallelujah, even though it's giving them the armor and the armament, the ammunition, hallelujah, to which to win in life is giving them the tools they need to succeed. But guess what? It's helping you. When you preach the gospel to your children, it empowers you. Hallelujah. It's a butterfly effect. It seems like it might be a little thing. Hallelujah. But that little thing turns into a big thing. Not only are you shaping and making, hallelujah, your children. It's strengthening and encouraging you. The ripple effect. A butterfly effect. And there's also a domino effect. Mothers, you don't know how important it is that you do the things you do. The hand that rocks the cradle rules the world because you're shaping nations and generations. You're setting examples. You're setting standards. You're paving ways. You're changing minds. You're shaping, hallelujah, future leaders. And at the same time, it's blessing you to be able to continue to do what you do. The domino effect. It says this. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, Thou therefore, my son, my son, my daughter, hallelujah, whoever it is, mothers, that you're speaking to, hallelujah, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. 
And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men and women who shall be able to teach others also, who will 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 teach others also. Hallelujah. You're shaping nations and generations. Hallelujah. When you teach your children the gospel. Your influence goes far beyond you. It's a domino effect. We talked about it on Wednesday night. Your influence goes beyond just your offspring. Your input, hallelujah, touches more than just the people you gave birth to. Mothers, when you minister to, hallelujah, the people that are under you, the people around you. It does something to them and it does something to you. Hallelujah. And it changes nations and generations. That was why Paul told Timothy that thing that's in you that your mama put in you, that her mama put in her. I need you to stir that thing up. I need you to stir that thing up. Hallelujah. That, that, that faith, that unfeigned faith. Hallelujah. That's been passed down from generation to generation. Don't let it sit dormant. Don't let it sit stagnant. You got to stir that thing up. Hallelujah. Because there's a world that's waiting to hear what your mama gave you. It's a world that needs, hallelujah, the benefit and the blessing of the word that your mama taught to you. Amen? Amen. When your mama said to you, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. When your mama told you, hallelujah, that some things are beneath you because you're a king. When your mama told you, hallelujah, that Jesus Christ loves you and I do too, hallelujah, therefore there's nothing that you can't do. That same encouraging word that your mama imparted to you, there's somebody waiting to hear it. They might not have had somebody over them to share it with them. They need you to stir up what your mama said to you. They need you to impart what your mama imparted to you. Stir up that spirit of faith. It's not a spirit of fear. It's a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind that was passed down to you from your mother. The hands that rock the cradle, rule the world, shape the world, change the world through the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. A godly mother is an influence not just to her children and her grandchildren and her stepchildren and her godchildren, but a godly mother is an influence to neighborhoods, hallelujah, to nations and generations. Because the same word that they shared with you, they gave it to you for you to then go and share it with somebody else too, who will then share it with somebody else, who will share it with somebody else, who will share it with somebody else, who will share it with somebody else to change the world. Because it's the hands that rock the cradle, the mothers, hallelujah, that influence the world. What has your mother said to you? 
that has changed you and shaped you. Share with somebody the testimony of the gospel of Jesus Christ that your mother shared with you. Proverbs chapter 31. The words of a king that were told to him by his mother before he even became king. Prophetic words of his promise and potential were spoken to him by his mother. And she gave him instructions on how to then pass that importation down to the next generation. And she said, don't give your strength to strange women that'll come in and teach your children strange doctrine. But find you a virtuous woman whose price is far above rubies, who the law of kindness is in her mouth, who knows how, hallelujah, to treat you and knows how to treat my grandchildren too. The hands that rock the cradle rule the world by imparting the word of God to their children. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you. We thank you and praise you, Heavenly Father, for the mantle and the mandate on the mothers to prophesy. Speak to your children. Hallelujah. About who they are and who they can be. Don't tear your children down. But speak words of life into your children. Tell your children, hallelujah, about the goodness and the grace of God. Tell your children, hallelujah, that there's nothing too hard for God, so there's nothing too hard for them. Tell your children about the God who is able to do exceeding abundantly above, hallelujah. Tell your children about the Lord, their shepherd, hallelujah. Therefore, they shall not want, they shall not lack, they shall go without. Tell your children hallelujah about God. And it will change their life and it will change their world. Talk to your children about the faith that I'm passing on to you right now. So it's stirred up in their hearts when they're going through. Pass on to your children the gospel of peace that will calm them when they're going through. Pass on to your children the things I'm telling you. The righteousness which is of faith speaks. What does it say? It says the word. The word which I'm preaching to you, mothers. You're assigned and you're charged to preach that same word too. So that your children, when they wake up in the morning and have a scripture to read, so that your children, when they're going off to school, have somebody praying the promises over them. So your children, hallelujah, know, hallelujah, that angels are encamped round about them, hallelujah, everywhere that they go. And goodness and mercy is following them, hallelujah, all the days of their life. Prophesy and preach to your children. Be a 
being a mother is more than just giving birth. It's speaking life unto your children. Continue, 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 continue,